Okay, well, I think we're going to start. I don't know where the other um, people are, but they will come on as they come on. And uh, I hope you like my graphic. This is what Medicare is like. And okay. because of that reason, there is an agency called State Health Insurance Assistance Program, which is abbreviated SHIP. And they're in every state. They're funded through the federal government. And the money comes through the states, through the local agencies on aging. Some states give their SHIP program a cute name. Uh, we call it a prize. Don't know why. That's in Pennsylvania. In Florida, they call it shine. Um, so uh, it's all the same uh, SHIP program. And generally, there's an office in every county if you're a, a populous state or it might be several counties in Pennsylvania we have an office in just about every county and usually when you need personalized counseling you have to call the 1-800 hotline number and they'll connect you to your um, your county office but for me you can always call me or email me um, and I'll give you my phone number now, which, which I think was also in your newsletter. It's 215-844-0439. And um, if you want any of the materials I'm showing in this uh, event today, you can give me a call or you can send me an email. My email is joanapprise at outlook.com. And I'll send you the materials. Um, and I can always set up a personal counseling session or a Zoom meeting if uh, people want. So first I'm going to go over Medicare. So uh, this is what I use to just quickly go over Medicare. Um, as you all know, I'm sure, Medicare is what you get when you turn 65, but you don't have to take it when you're 65 if you already are covered by a group health plan from work and your work has more than 20 employees. In which case, then you might want to take your Part A, which uh, covers hospital expenses because most people don't have to pay for Part A. And if you have a group health insurance, the Part A will pay secondary to whatever your group health insurance is if you go in the hospital. But you don't want to take Part B while you're covered by other insurance because you won't be using it and you'll be paying for it and you'll be giving up some rights uh, to get a Medigap supplement. So uh, Medicare has three parts. Part A is hospital insurance. It covers everything that happens to you in the hospital except the doctors. It also covers some skilled nursing, some hospice at the end of life, and some home health care. And Medicare pays 80% of your expenses. Part B is your outpatient coverage, which covers any, any uh, doctor visits, labs, x-rays, outpatient procedures, and any durable medical equipment. And it also covers a little bit of home health care and it covers some preventive services. But again, Medicare pays 80% of those expenses and then you're expected to pay the other 20. And the third part of Medicare is called Part D. It's your prescription drug coverage. And they say it's optional, but unless you have another sort of plan where you can get your medications, you need to sign up for a Part D drug plan because if you don't, there will be penalties if you sign up in the future. And what they call Part C is Medicare Advantage plans, which we're going to get to in a second, which includes Part A, Part B, and a drug plan. So they call it Part C. So these are your two options when you first join Medicare. You can either go on Original Medicare or you can take a Medicare Advantage. The Advantage plans are HMOs or PPOs, which means they all have networks and they all have co-pays. So when you get an Advantage plan, it's a good idea to get a very inexpensive one or even a zero monthly premium so that you can save up your money 
to pay for all the co-pays you're going to pay when you use the plan. Also, because they have networks, uh, some of the plans will charge you higher co-pays if you go out of network, um, or some of them might not even pay at all if you're out of network. And your network for a Medicare Advantage is within your county, usually. Now in Philadelphia, there is some coverage for Montgomery County as well, because it's a lot of people cross the line and they go into another county. But you always need to check that your doctors, labs, x-ray facilities, hospitals are in your network on an Advantage plan. And the other thing is, is that uh, many of these require referrals so that when you want to go to a specialist, you have to get a referral from your primary doctor. They do cover 80% of Part A, Part B, and, and prescription plan, but you're still paying your own Part B monthly premium in addition to any co-pays from Medicare Advantage. On the other side is Original Medicare, and Original Medicare is when you get your card and it says Part A and Part B, and that's what your Medicare card covers. And that's 80% of your hospital expenses and 80% of your uh, Part B outpatient expenses. So when you're on Original Medicare, you usually get a Part D prescription drug plan, and then you can add a Medicare supplement, which is called a Medigap. So anything that's a supplement is a Medigap. And if uh, these people over here on the Advantage plan side call themselves supplements, they are not supplements. They are the way that you're taking your Medicare, which is completely different from a Medicare Medigap supplement. The Medigap supplement covers the 20% of your expenses of Medicare covered services that A and B don't cover. So if you have part a and part B and a Medigap, all of your services are covered. And I will give you more details about the Medigap in a minute. Uh, the Part D plan stands alone and this is something you have to change every year to make sure that you are getting the best deal for the coming year. And the time to change your drug plan is uh, during open enrollment every year, October 15th to December 7th. There's also an opportunity to change your Advantage plan every year. And there are several times you can do that. Uh, one of them is during open enrollment, that same time period. And the other is during January, February, and March of each year. If you have an Advantage plan, you can change your Advantage plan and your services will start the following month. If you neglect to sign up for Part A or Part B during your initial enrollment period, which is uh, starts the month of your birthday, three months before the month of your birthday and three months after the month of your birthday, that's when you have to sign up unless you're covered by a group health insurance. If you're covered by group health insurance, all these time periods don't matter because when your insurance ends, you'll get a special enrollment period that allows you to sign up uh, when, you, when your insurance ends, no matter how old you are. So don't worry about penalties if you're covered by a group health plan because most of them are creditable under Medicare. But as we were saying before, COBRA is not considered creditable under Medicare. So if you wanna stay on COBRA to avoid going on Medicare, you might end up with a penalty. Uh, I think I've said everything I have to say about all of these. The Medigaps are private insurance that you buy through an insurance broker. They so they cost you money each month that you can predict, and then they cover all your co-pays Whereas the Advantage plans, you might get a plan for zero monthly premium, but then once you start using the plan, you get co-pays which are unpredictable. So we'll talk about that in detail. Also the Medigap, when you first start your Part B, you have six months from the beginning of your Part D 
to get a Medigap supplement without medical underwriting. This is called a guaranteed issue right. And that means that no matter what pre-existing conditions you have, they, the Medigap insurance people are not allowed to ask you any medical questions and you get your medical, your Medigap policy as though you were a healthy person. But this is just for the first six months of while well, you're on part B. After that, you can get a Medigap, but they will ask you a lot of questions about your health. And if uh, you have chronic conditions, they will either not sell you a policy or they will charge you a lot more money. Um, the other thing to say about Medigap, let me think about this. Well, we'll talk about the benefits of the Medigap. And if you have any questions, you can either raise your hand or send me a chat message, okay? Um, so basically a prize, my program is here to help people choose which side of the line they wanna be on and help them get plans. We can sign people up for their Part D plan through the computer. We can sign people up for a Medicare Advantage plan through the computer. Um, the reason that you see Joe Namath on TV every five minutes is because the Medicare Advantage plans make money for the insurance companies and they're dying to get you to sign up for them. All right, so let's go out of this. Does anyone have any questions about the difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about oh, uh, the Medigap plan. Oh, could I just ask one question? Absolutely. Yeah. So really, um, I guess when I, before I started, um, before I arrived today, I was wondering, so there really aren't many possible plans. They're really just, you're really deciding between two sides of, you know, those two plans or, or which way you're gonna go which way you're going to go with your Medicare. So you're either in the original Medicare or the Mer Medicare Advantage. Is that right? That is your initial decision. After that, there are about 40 Advantage plans in Philadelphia County. And there's a whole lot in uh, Montgomery County as well. If, are any of you from Montgomery County? Oh. I'm from Montgomery. I'm from Montgomery County. Okay, so the Advantage plans are county specific. Oh, so let me, I didn't really say this either. So the Advantage plans are county specific, which means that you sign up in your county for a plan that's offered in your county, and your network is usually in your county. And if you move to another place, and it's in a different county, you need to get a new plan. And certainly if you move to another state. Uh, with original Medicare, you can see any doctor, um, any hospital, any medical facility that takes Medicare. And regardless of the name of your supplement, it does not have a network. It's a supplement follows Medicare. So if you go to Oklahoma to visit the grandchildren, uh, your Medicare will follow you there. It's a national program and your supplement will cover uh, the 20%, no matter where you are in the US of A. Uh, the Advantage plan, if you're with a national uh, named insurance provider like Aetna or Cigna, if you go out of state or out of county, you can call them and say, I'm traveling to another state. Is there somebody I can see in that other state uh, that you will cover? And they will, may give you some names. Uh, if it's a local plan like All Well or um, Clover, they may not have a national network and they may not be able to cover you if you go out of your area. Um, also, they may tell you how many specialist visits you can have or, or you know things like that. Whereas Original Medicare, you make your own appointments. Uh, if you want to see two different orthopods, you, it's nobody's business. You can just make your appointments and compare and do what you want. And any doctor that takes Medicare will see you. 
and the Medigap follows. So you need to give them your Medigap information. But if they say, oh, we don't take Cigna, that's not a true fact for a Medigap. There is no network and the Cigna will pay the, uh, the secondary amount no matter what. Okay, so, uh, so, and there are a lot of Medigap plans as well, which we're gonna go over now. So the first decision is which side of the divide you wanna be on. And then within that, there are a lot of drug plans and there's a lot of Medigaps and a lot of Advantage plans. So these are the Medigap plans. Um, the Medigap, uh, yes? Okay. Just one more question. So you, it seems like you're, are you, more are we more interested in or you feel like there's more po more positive things about the um original medicare plan did i say that or it did seems you like you're it seems like you're <laughs> you're listing more positives about that um i'm listing the positives and and negatives of both um i think a lot in the long run medigap is usually cost effective it gives you the opportunity of knowing what you're going to pay each month in drug expenses, as opposed to the Advantage plan. Uh, however, the Medigap plans cost a few pennies, whereas the Advantage plans, you can get a good Advantage plan for, for a zero monthly premium. So we're gonna compare all of that, and uh, then that's for you guys to decide wh which way you wanna go. So let me just tell you, so there are a whole bunch of Medigap options or plans, they're called. Uh, the C and the F are no longer offered. And if you're eligible to get them because you turned 65 uh, last year or before, you still don't want them because they're more expensive for what you get. So currently the plan that gives the most coverage is the G plan. And the second best plan is the N plan. And the difference between the two, I will explain as we go down the list, but the uh, N plan is usually about $30 a month cheaper than the G. And in exchange for that, you pay for some visits and you pay if you go out of state. So let me go over the um, benefits that you get on the G and the N plan for Medigap, uh, you have to call an insurance broker to get to buy a Medigap plan, and I will tell you how to do that. Uh, but let's go over the benefits. So first of all, let's talk about the Part A benefits. Part A is the hospital. So if you're on original Medicare and you go into the hospital, there's usually a deductible of 1484, 1484, um, each time you're admitted to the hospital. But if you have a Medigap, that's covered. When you're in the hospital, Medicare pays for the first 60 days that you're hospitalized. But if you have to be in the hospital longer than that, there's a pretty high copay. And if you have a Medigap G or N, the, all those copays are completely covered. If you're in the hospital and you need blood, your first three pints of blood are covered by both plans. If you have to leave the hospital and go to a skilled nursing facility, uh, the first 20 days are paid completely by Medicare, but if you have to stay for more than 20 days, there's a big copay, but the G and the N both cover those copays. And then at the end of life, if you need hospice care, uh, all your co-pays are covered by your Medigap. So now let's go to outpatient expenses. Now everybody has to pay, aside from their monthly premium for Part B, which is this year, I believe it's $148.50, uh, that usually gets deducted from your social if you're getting Social Security or else you get billed for that. But then there's a deductible each year. And for 2021, it's $203. That means that when you go on Medicare and you start using services, you have to pay the first $203 out of your pocket. And after that, 
everything else is covered by your by your Medigap. Uh, except, so if we're talking about doctors, co-pays, labs, x-rays, uh, durable equipment, and other outpatient procedures, after you pay the first 203 each year, your G plan will cover all those expenses completely, whereas the N plan will cover most of this, but you do have to pay $20 every time you see a doctor and $50 if you go to the emergency room. Other than that, they pay for everything that, that the G plan pays for. In addition, 100% um, of your co-insurance for preventive services is covered by both the G and the N plan. And that's for things like um, screening exams, screening blood tests, colonoscopies, mammograms, uh, all those uh, types of screening and preventive services are covered completely. Then um, there is something called excess benefits. And that means that in some states, a doctor is allowed to charge you an extra 15%. Well, doctors, hospitals, everybody's allowed to charge you an extra 15% above what Medicare pays. However, Pennsylvania is a state that does not allow that. But there is a difference between the G plan and the N plan, which is like I said, if you go to Oklahoma to visit the, ch the grandchildren, your G plan will cover those excess charges, whereas the N plan will not. And that's the only other difference between the G and the N. And the states that do not allow excess charges are these states. Uh, we are one of them, luckily. New York is one of them. Uh, a lot of the New England states, but most of the states in the union, you will face those excess charges if you get sick in one of those states. Now, what about outside the country? So Medicare does not cover you outside the country and neither does your Medicare Advantage, but your Medigap, both the G and the N plans will cover 80% of any emergency care that you need when you're on your cruise or you're hiking around Europe. Um, anytime during the first 60 days of each trip, after a deductible and there's a maximum uh, lifetime benefit. But it's good to know that you have some kind of coverage if you leave the country and you get sick. I think I've covered all of this now. If, does anybody have any questions about Medigap? Medigap, if you're 65, you're just turning 65 and you're a woman and you don't smoke, the G plans are starting at about 130, 140 a month. And the N plans are starting at about 98 to $105 a month for their monthly premium. Okay, so I'm- so That would be, that they would take out, that that's what you would be paying then, not counting what they're taking out as a social security. That would be what your bill would be then each month. Yes. And I'm not seeing, are you seeing the screen? No. Oh. I see, I see the people, but I, I don't see. Oh, I'm no. sorry. I thought, where did my sharing go? So, I, this is just exactly what I was showing you, the G and the N and the, the benefits that are covered, which I described to you. And if you want me to send you this, I can send you a copy of any of these handouts. You just need to email me at J-O-A-N-A-P-P-R-I-S-E at outlook.com. And I will send these to you. Okay, so now since we're talking about Medigap, I'm going to tell you how to find a broker to sell you a Medigap plan. And I'm sharing again. So what you do is you go to a website that's called medicaresup.org. 
Can you see that? Can somebody unmute themselves and tell me if you see that? Yes, I can okay. see it. Okay, thank you. Okay, and you go to medicaresup.org and this is a listing of insurance brokers who have sworn to work in your behalf. And if you click on find local agent, then you scroll down to where it wants your zip code because you will find an agent that is a, a broker that is licensed to sell a Medigap in your zip code. So let's just do 19119. Oh, no, let's do 19118. And you click, and any zip code, you know, will take you to the right place. And you're not putting in a phone number, so they're not going to call you back. And if you hang up on them because they're giving you bad information, they're not going to um, know how to get back to you. So you get a listing of the uh, people who are licensed to sell in your zip code. And you call one of them. And I'm going to go over the prices for Medigaps. And if they are in the price range that I'm telling you about, then you should move forward. And I haven't had any complaints about anybody on this list. Um, if they start quoting you prices that are higher, then you may want to just hang up and go to a different broker. Now, buying Medigap, well, let me let me go to the, the sheet. So this is the website that you would use. Um, and this is the Pennsylvania Department of Aging place where the insurance brokers are looking up prices and I can do this as well, but this is not available to you. So this is when they say, I'm going to run you a quote. They run a quote and they say, what's your zip code? And you say, uh, 19119. And they say, how old are you? And you might want to say, well, let's say 65. We'll start with that. And then they ask you the only medical question they're allowed to ask you, which is, do you smoke? And your answer to that question is either yes or no. For any questions they ask you, you do not say, I don't smoke now, I quit after 20 years. You don't say that. The question is, do you smoke? And your answer is yes or no. And then you tell them when you want this to start, so somebody said they need it for July. So let's look at July or May. Let's try May. Okay, and then the person, you're in Philadelphia, you're a woman and you wanna look at the G plans first. Let's look at the G plans. Confusing. <laughs> and they're organized by price. And why is that? So I explained to people about Gucci loafers. If you buy your Gucci loafers at the Gucci store, they're gonna cost you about $750. If you find the exact same Gucci loafers at DSW, they're probably only gonna cost you 250. So they're the same exact loafers, but they have a million different prices depending on where you buy it. So the Medicare Medigap supplements are the same. They have a million of them. And for a 65 year old woman who doesn't smoke in, in this zip code, the lowest price, you always want an A or an A minus rating. The lowest price now is $132. You can also go down the list and you can buy one for $146 or you can buy one for, whoops, for a lot more money but they give you the exact same benefits. So why you would wanna pay more, I don't know. Now, somehow this knocked me out. So I'm, oh, there it goes. So what we do is we sort them by price and we tell you, you want an A or an A minus. So this is an A minus for 132. Here's an A rated for 132. Here's a, a rated for 134. And you might say, why do they do this? And it's because of the name. 
So for instance, AARP for one type is down here and it starts at 143, but these, these go up a little bit every year. So you would want to start at the lowest price. These Medigaps do not give you any trouble. They follow Medicare. Uh, there's no reason that you should get a name brand if you don't need one. And like I said, they go up pretty high, including the one that AARP has, that if you feel like it, you can pay $451. It's the same plan. So when you're going and you're talking to the broker, you want to be sure that they're giving you a number in the ballpark of the number that I am quoting. Now, some of them have a household discount and some of them don't. If you and a spouse are getting the same plan, uh, you'll get a 7% discount, but sometimes it's cheaper if you and your spouse get plans completely separately based on your age and tobacco use and all that stuff. So that's something you have to figure out. The other thing is when you're talking to the broker, Medigap does not, Medicare does not cover glasses, hearing aids, and dental care. So you can always buy a plan from a broker for somewhere in the $30 a month range that covers glasses, hearing aids, and uh, routine and complicated dental care. Now, let's look at the end plan. So the same 65-year-old woman who doesn't smoke is now looking for an end plan. And it takes a minute. And so this person can get an Aetna end plan for under $100 a month that's A-rated. So why you would look any further, I have no idea. But why you might want to look further is that not all brokers work with every single insurance company. You can see how many insurance companies there are here. Uh, and there are some that are not listed. USAA is not listed and um, Keystone is not listed. Independence Blue Cross. Why? They don't want to, you to see their prices compared to the other prices. Okay, so then if we change, you know, I don't think this changes a lot, but let's change to somebody who's 67. So if you're 67 um, and you want to get an end plan or you have a different zip code, well, that end plan is still available at the same price if you're 67. And the cheap G plans, let's see how cheap they still are. Yeah, they're still same range. So th these numbers won't change unless you're a lot older or if you're a man, they have to pay more. Or if you smoke, they have to pay more. So instead of $132 for a 67 year old woman, if it's a man who smokes, we'll see what happens to that price. Okay, so you see it popped up about $24 a month for a man. No, more than that. The cheapest one, the cheapest A rated for a man who smokes is 170 a month. So that's why I say you might want to be with the same company to get a household discount, or you might want to do it separately to save money. You have to figure out which uh, works. I would not get an unrated plan. I would not take a plan that's uh, rated B because these are by the insurance industry. They're rating their plans and you want an A rated stable plan. Any questions about the Medigap? Uh, and, and you found that on the Pennsylvania Department of Aging? Is no, that what you, you for that? I did not find it. I have rights to that as do the brokers because I'm an, a certified apprise counselor. This is not a page that's open to the public. This is what your broker will use when you call them and say, I want a plan. They will look it up on there.
So I think I've done just about everything for Medigap. So now we're going to talk about Medicare Advantage, which is the other side. So let me share again. So as I said, the Advantage plans are county specific. So if someone in Montgomery County wants an Advantage plan, they need a different listing. But this is just for an illustration purpose. So there are one, two, three, four pages of plans that are available in Pennsylvania. And what you want is a plan that has a good network in Pennsylvania and is not charging you a lot of upfront costs. What do I mean by that? So if you look at these um, AARP plans, and you, of course you hear AARP on the TV a lot, uh, and everybody talking about Advantage plans a lot. So you can get an AARP plan that's a PPO, which means it has a wider network than an HMO and you don't need referrals. You can get one for a zero monthly premium. Gee, that sounds great. Except when you look here, you have to pay an additional $500 annual deductible out of your pocket before the plan starts paying for anything. Then they will charge you zero for your primary doctor if it's in the network, but if you go out of network for your primary, it's $45 a visit. There's specialist visits of all of these plans are somewhere between $25 and $50 a visit in network. But if you go outside the network, they can be pretty hefty. And they all charge you something for your outpatient services. And they all charge you something for a hospital visit. And they either charge you a flat rate per stay, which means you pay $750 if it's year, uh, but nobody wants to pay this much money out of their pocket for a year. And then to entice you, they give you some vision, dental, hearing, fitness, worldwide health, I don't know what that means, probably a phone call, or telehealth. Some of them give you transportation, some don't, some give you fitness, some don't. So you have this whole list to look at. And the way we usually decide is because they include a drug plan, when we go into the computer, and I will do a demonstration of that for you, when we go into the computer and you put your drug list in, you often will find the plan that gives you the cheapest medications. And then you look at those plans and then you see what plans have good networks in this area. So usually I recommend uh, Cigna plan, uh, Keystone plan, Health Partners has a good um, network and Cigna. They all have good um, networks in this area and they don't charge you a lot of deductibles that you have to pay out of your pocket. So I just sort of put them in yellow. They're all zero premium plans because to my mind, if you're paying a monthly premium and you're really not getting anything for it, except some you know, potential costs, uh, then you might as well save your $30 a month to pay for your co-pays. But that's something only you can decide. Then there's the Keystone, which is very, has a very good network in this area. Again, the plans that you're paying for, uh, you have to be sure that you're getting a real benefit from that, which you know you aren't always. And it's a lot of it depends on your personal circumstances. 
Usually a PPO is better than an HMO because as I said, they have a wider network and they also um, don't need referrals. But in this case, this PPO charges you $5 to see your primary doctor, which may not be a big deal, but most of the plans do not charge you for your primary. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot of range of what they charge for um, <clears throat> specialists. And then in this column of outpatient visits, it depends if it's a procedure or lab work or an x-ray, you usually have to call ahead of time or look in your brochure to see how much they charge for all those individual services. We can't list all of them here, it would be just too crazy. Uh, this has a fairly low per diem hospital rate. Uh, this one doesn't say anything about going out of network. This one does say you pay more going out of network. So all that is stuff you have to check. So why doesn't this have an out of network? Well, it could be that they don't charge you more out of network, or it could be that they just don't pay if you go out of network. So you, those are all the things you have to check into. And there's so many plans that we don't go into the weeds, but when you go on the plan finder, you can usually uh, look at more of those details. <clears throat> so does anybody have questions about the Advantage plans? Okay, so, um, so there are other things to talk about that I, We'll talk about if you want me to, but not everybody wants to, you know, hear about them. There are <clears throat> low income programs. Uh, there is a federal low income program if your income is suitable and your assets. That's uh, called Extra Help. It's a federal program. It helps pay for medications if you're low income. There's also a state based program called Medicare Savings, which will pay for your Part B, which as I said, this year it's $148.50 a month for Part B. And if you fall into one of these categories of income, uh, the state will pay your benefits for you. There's also um, high income, kind of a tax, it's called IRMA. Uh, and that means that if you are a single person and you make more than 88,000 um, a year, you will have to pay extra for your Part B premium and extra for your Part D drug plan. Or if you're a married couple and your in combined income is 176,000, but if you're a person that had a very good job and you're, you made $300,000 a year uh, two years ago, but now you're gonna be living on your social security and your income is gonna fall you know, below what it would have been when they look at your income because social security will look at your income from two years ago and they will charge you an IRMA tax on that income. So if your income goes down significantly, <clears throat> then you need to file a form uh, that asks for relief from that. And there's a form that you can do that. And I'm not gonna go into the details because certain things apply to some people and other things apply to other people. And we don't need to go over it in detail, except to know that they exist. And if you have more questions about it, you can call me. Okay, and that was the old chat. So let's see. So as I said, um, if you are turning 65 and you're on social security, you will get your Medicare card automatically. But otherwise, if you've been working and you're over 65, the social security does not know when you want to go on Medicare. And social security are the people who um, issue your Medicare card. You have to be sure that Social Security has your correct address. If you move, you won't be getting mail. If you're getting mail from Social Security, you're in good shape. Uh, you need to call Social Security, I would say, at least two or three months 
ahead of time if you want your Medicare card that you don't have, or if you have Part A and you want to get on Part B, you need to call them. Uh, the offices are all open and they're all working. They're just not taking people in the office. So you can call or you can fax um, any information they need. Uh, the low income programs have applications, which we can help you with if you need them. Uh, there's also something called PACE and PACENET, which is income based uh, at a higher income than what I was showing you. And they, um, they have an application as well. Uh, let me see if there's anything I forgot to talk about that I can remember. Okay, so does anybody have questions or specific, more specific issues that they have questions about? You can unmute yourself and just talk because no one's got their face up there to wave and say, I have a question. Hi, um, yes, one question. I see that you're a certified APPRISE uh, Medicare counselor. Yes. So are you pretty much an educator rather than you're not selling the plans? Are you a broker or not? We do not sell. Brokers are not allowed to be APPRISE counselors unless they're retired. We don't make any money. We don't charge any money. Uh, we give unbiased information. Uh, you may not have been here at the beginning when I was talking about a prize, which is a part of the state health insurance assistance program. And uh, they're fund we're funded through federal money that is administered through the states and your local area uh, agencies on aging. So in Philadelphia, we are administered through PCA, Philadelphia Corporation for Aging. We have two offices, one at Einstein and one at Cary, which is the Center for Advocacy for the Rights and Interests of the Elderly. Uh, nobody is seeing anybody in the office at this point. We're all doing it by phone or by Zoom. Uh, we go through a massive training program, which somebody described as getting a PhD in Medicare. Uh, and then we get certified, and then even after we're certified, we have to um, shadow <laughs> with a preceptor, uh, and there's always someone around to answer questions if we don't know the answer. We love to have people come to volunteer. Um, you know, usually we volunteer in the office a certain number of hours a week, um, but now, you know, we're all doing it from home. So no, we don't charge. No, we don't make money. No, we don't sell anything. No, um, nobody's paying me to plug their program. Um, I do this of my own free will. <laughs> okay. I used to be the director of the uh, a prize program at the uh, mayor's commission, but I had to quit there and then they lost their uh, contract because they were doing shady things. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so nobody pays me and nobody pays those brokers. The brokers get paid by whatever plan you choose. They get paid by the plan. So sometimes if they're unscrupulous, they will up Try, they would try to sell you a more expensive plan because then they make more money. But the reason that you go to that website that I showed you is because those people have sworn to work in your behalf. Uh, just to remind you of that website, um, it's medicaresup.org for a supplement. Now, if you want an Advantage plan, I do that on the computer, or the drug plans, I do that on the computer. So let me show you how that works. So here is uh, Medicare.gov. This is the home page. Uh, there's also a huge amount of information on here that you can look up, which is more than what's just in the booklet that you get. Uh, then you can search for different 
topics also, but somehow it, it gets tricky. You have to know what you're searching for in a way to get the right page. Um, we can help with that. And then uh, you have to get a login. So anybody that's got a Medicare card can create an account. So what you do is you click the login, create an account, and then you click on create an account. And you need to start off with your Medicare number, which is why I said you need to have your Medicare card. And then a last name and email address, and then you have to make up a username and password. And the reason that you need this is because anytime you want to go into your page on Medicare and make a change, or if you call me to help you do that, you need to have a username and password that you keep near your Medicare card. But we don't have to do that today. The other thing to do is go back to the main page and look at find drug and health plans. Now you can also do a lot of this stuff, new plans, costs and all that stuff. But if you wanna find a plan, you click on here or I will do this with you. And then we can continue without logging in. Now, the problem without logging in is that when you put your drug list on here, it will not be, this is not your page. This is an anonymous page. So if you have 20 medications and you put you go through all the effort of putting them in here, you want them to stay. So you want them to be on your page. But say you're looking for a drug plan. So you click drug plan. You can all see this, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then you enter your zip code and you press continue. And then it asks you, do you get any help from any of these low income programs? And you can put it in or you can say, I'm not sure, or I don't get any help. <clears throat> and then of course you want to see the drug costs. And then they ask you if you're going to be getting your medications at a retail pharmacy or mail order. Now, if you cannot get mail order because your medicines will be stolen from your doorstep, then you have to check off retail pharmacy. But otherwise, it's good to check both because you can compare prices between mail order and um, retail pharmacy. And then they ask you to put in your medication. So Somebody give me the name of a medication that seniors are, might be taking. You have to unmute. No one has a medication? Yeah, but they never make sense without looking at the name of the medication. <laughs> okay. So here's Lipitor. So we say add drug. And it says there's a generic version. So you say, okay. And then they wanna know how many milligrams you take. And if you're taking one a day, it's 30 a month. And you say, add to my drug list. Uh, then what's another drug? Let's try lisinopril. Add drug, find the amount, the milligrams, how many times a day add to your drug list. Somebody have another drug they'd like to give me? I'll just go on with my own imagination, metformin. So metformin is a drug you take twice a day. So it says 60. Okay, so somebody name a drug that you see on television, one of those high priced drugs. I have a high priced drug, Dexalent. Spell it. D-E-X-I. There it is. Okay, and how many milligrams do you take? Um, what are the options? Um, Let's just take, let's say you take 60. Okay. And you take, is that a one a day drug? Yeah. Okay, someone give me another expensive drug. Uh, Copaxone. 
Spell it. C O X C C as in copy. C C O P Copaxa C O C O P. Not X. There it is. Copaxa. Here it is. And that has a generic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you select a dosage. That's an injectable. Yeah, and it's an MS drug. And how many times a day do you use that? Uh, three times a week. Okay, so this comes in um, a syringe, which I think is just one dose. Yes. So if it's three times a week, then a month it would be about 12, but we'll just call it 15 because you don't want to run out. <laughs> All right, so these, so here's, we have a bunch of things now on the list. So then we say done adding drugs. And then it wants your pharmacies. So we like to keep mail order in the mix. And I usually put the big ones in here if there are any. Oh, we picked a, a zip code without many pharmacies. Let's uh, go back and change the zip code to. Uh, one nine. Okay, so now we've got a save on, which is at the Acme. We've got a CVS. Uh, we've got Pelham, but they're usually not in the network. So this is all the drugstores they give us within a distance of one mile. But if we want more pharmacies, we can go to a distance of five miles. And if we go to five miles, then we get uh, we put, let's just put a Rite Aid in just for the fun of it and a Walgreens, okay? So then we can compare prices with all these different pharmacies with mail order. And this is what I do if you call me for, for help. So then it looks through all of the drugs and we put a filter on because we want the lowest cost of your drug co-pays plus your monthly premium. And so what comes out to be the lowest cost for you for this imaginary person would be a, four, a three and a half star Humana Walmart plan, uh, which will cost you $17.20 a month. And it says out of pocket for the entire year is about 4,900 retail or mail order. Okay, so some people don't like Walmart. They say, I don't want, I'll never go to Walmart. Okay, so what's the second best? So here's Express Scripts. So Express Scripts is gonna charge you more for your monthly premium and also more, about $100 more a month for your um, drug co-pays. And then if you wanna look at the exact details, you go to Plan Details. So on plan details, it shows you your monthly premium. It shows you what your deductible is if you're taking tier three and four drugs. And it tells you what your uh, pharmacies are. And these, all these pharmacies are standard costs. So it doesn't look like there's a preferred uh, pharmacy for this Humana plan. Because we didn't put Walmart pharmacy. I think they only work with Walmart. Uh, so let's go back and find a better plan that I can show you better examples. So let's go back and pick the Express Scripts. And that's also three and a half stars because there's a, a law that if any plan gets five stars, everybody's allowed to switch to it. But that's never happened in my lifetime. So a little better for this, your drug deductible is lower, but your costs for the year are a little higher. So let's look at that. So this uh, total monthly premium is $26. You have a lower deductible and you have two pharmacies that are preferred, which means that the costs will likely be cheaper at the CVS and the save on. So if you look at Rite Aid, your total costs for the year are 5,000. 
If you look at Walgreens, it's the same. If you look at CVS, you're not saving any money. <laughs> Sometimes there's a big difference and save on's no different. Uh, mail order is a little cheaper. And then you can look at exactly what they're charging you and you can see the big offenders here are these two drugs. So you can also, do you know about GoodRx or you hear those commercials on TV? Yeah. What I have GoodRx is a real thing. Uh, they give you cheaper prices. So let's look at this Dexalant, which will cost you. Well, if you look at your costs here, they tell you they take the deductible out the first month because they want to make sure they get to you. And <coughs> you're only getting uh, your Dexalant every couple of months. But the mail order mail order is supposed to give you every three month prices i don't know why they're not yeah this is a problem i don't know this is a glitch but anyway you can take a look at your dexalent so it's go from 918 before the deductible to 105 and then when you're in the donut hole it's 229 and then at the end of the donut hole it's 4590 but you can also look at good rx and you put in your drug. And this will tell you if you can get it cheaper somewhere else. So you can definitely get it cheaper than the $900 if you either put GoodRx on your phone and you go into the drugstore and you just hold up your phone and that's the price you'll get. So for instance, the first month, you might want to get it from CVS with good RX and let your uh, deductible be eaten up by your other drugs. Um, or if you don't have a phone that you can do this on, you can actually print out your coupon and take it to the drugstore. That's how good RX works. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also, whoops. Go back to your drug list. I'm going to open GoodRx over here. All right, you can go to your drug list and you can look at that other medication. Now, you also might notice that Walgreens uh, for your Dexalent charges you less. So I sometimes you can play around with this. Mm -hmm. And you can print out this whole bunch of information and you can say, well, I'm going to get my Dexalent at Walgreens because it starts at 322, it goes down to 47, 80, and 16, which is a lot cheaper than what the uh, mail order had. But it's obviously charging you more for something else because uh, the atorvastatin was zero by mail order and here it's 11. So you can shop around because when you sign up for a drug plan, you're not signing up for a pharmacy. You're just getting the information about what everything would cost at the different pharmacies. So here's also this Glada Amor. I don't know. I'm not going to even try to spell it. It's, uh, it starts at 1323 and goes down to 330. Uh, and you can look at GoodRx. Sometimes it's cheaper on GoodRx and sometimes it isn't. So here it's really not any cheaper on GoodRx. Sometimes it's a lot cheaper on GoodRx. Sometimes it's actually more expensive on GoodRx. So this is what we do when you call, if you say I want a drug plan and we look at all your drugs and we figure out um, what's the cheapest drug plan for you. Now the same is true if we go back, I'm going back. 
Now we said uh, that we were looking for drug plans, but we can also do the same thing if we're looking for advantage plans. Now, I don't know if those drugs stayed in there or not. We can only hope, but they probably didn't. Oh yeah, they stayed. So here are the drugs if you wanted to look for a an advantage plan. Again, we're gonna look at the pharmacies. Oh, I had changed the zip code, I'm sorry. I thought that was for the advantage plan. Well, what were you just looking no, on? That was, the, that was for a standalone drug plan. Oh, I see. So for the advantage plans, I'm not even gonna change. Let's just put a bunch of pharmacies in here again. Uh, let's go five miles, find more drug plans, drug pharmacies. So then we should get the save on and we should get the Walgreens and the CVS. Still didn't get the save on. All right, we may have to just go with what we got. All right, so let's just look so that we just do the same thing. We go in and now you're gonna get the advantage plans. So Humana Gold has an advantage plan. I don't recommend it because it has a very poor network in Philadelphia. So let's go to something that I would recommend. AARP for an advantage plan, but as we said, it has that $500 deductible. Clover's local. Oh my goodness. You can see where the ones that are not so good are going to be cheaper. Here, so oh, Keystone Basic. Here's one that I recommend. So you may not want to go along with me because you're going to pay a lot of money for your drugs. Uh, but you're going to get a zero monthly premium. I guess you could get a, a different plan where it would cost you a lot less for your drugs. And, you know, usually I don't run into this huge discrepancy, but somebody might want um, a Humana zero premium plan because the drugs cost less. But this is what we do. So we look at networks. Uh, Keystone Focus is a plan that only works with uh, Jefferson and its affi affiliates. So if you're in the Jefferson system, it's a good plan for you. The Keystone plans do not give you transportation. If transportation is something that you care about, you might want it. You could always look at all the benefits. So it gives you vision, dental, hearing, fitness, no transportation, telehealth. They uh, Most of them give you some over-the-counter um, benefits at the drugstore, certain amount a month that you can buy. And this is how, so this is how we look. So you're paying no copay for your primary 40 per visit. There's the personal choice prime, which I said is a PPO where you don't need referrals and you don't need, um, you have a wider network. They still don't give you transportation. You know, so these are the things we can look at all of this when I go to enroll you. Um, if, uh, but this if, is how the website works. If Thank you, that, that was helpful. If you were not taking many medications right now, let's say you were on there virtually no medications. So then wouldn't that affect, you know, what direction you might go in with your with your prescription plan, and then you could change that in the future if you started on more medication, is that right? Yes, there is actually a prescription plan this year that is uh, $7.30 a month. If you're not taking any drugs, that is the plan that um, I would suggest you take uh, because you need to have a plan to avoid penalties. 
and I'm trying to look for the my penalties information. I don't know if I can find it. But there are penalties if you don't get Part B when you were supposed to get Part B. You get a certain percentage of a penalty added to your Part B plan for the rest of your life every month. And the same with a drug plan. So if you're not taking any medications, you might say, well, why do I even need a drug plan? And the answer is, if you don't get one, you will get a penalty when eventually you sign up. I'll be right if, back. If you have, if you have an employer um, retirement health plan, can you compare the costs? Can you help a person compare the costs of yes. other plans? So sometimes you're, you need to get the details of what your retirement plan covers. Okay. Some retirement plans just cover your supplement. And then you don't need a supplement. You have your supplement and you're done. You just have to get a drug plan. Some retirement plans give you full insurance, but only for, say, five years. Mm -hmm. And then you need to know what it gives you and if it's worth it and what you're going to do when the five years is over. Some other retirement plan. There are all kinds of retirement plans. If you were a teacher in the school district, you have the HOP plan. You have a choice of HOP uh, instruments. So you, there are two different HOP Medigap supplement plans with different benefits. There are two different HOP Advantage plans. And there are, are, is a HOP prescription plan and a, and a union prescription plan that you all have to compare to what Medicare, what Medicare would give you. So yes, we help with all of that, but we might ask you to go back to your employer and ask uh, some other questions. So now I'm gonna try to find the penalties thing. Now you see it, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the same thing I was doing, but you weren't seeing it. Okay, so part A, you won't have to worry about penalties. Uh, part B, uh, this is wrong. For 2021, it's 148.50 for the uh, for your standard monthly premium. And then there's an enrollment penalty of an extra 10% of that. So it would be about $15 a month for every, tw every 12 month period that you could have had part B but didn't take it. So instead of paying the 148.50, you'll have an additional $15 to pay every month for the rest of your life if you don't get your part B when you're supposed to. But you get a year's grace period, but beyond that, sometimes it gets astronomical. The part D penalty is a little different. It's 1% of the national <coughs> base premium, which this year is going to be $33. So it'd be about really three, three cents. But it's every month, every month for the rest of your life. And it might increase every year. Uh, so that's what you should be aware of. So even if you're not taking any medications, you still need to get a drug plan. Okay. You don't need to get the part B if you're covered, like I said, by uh, work insurance um, or any other creditable insurance. So your retirement insurance, you also have to find out if it's creditable or whether it pays first before Medicare or whether it will pay secondary to Medicare. Okay. Any other questions about any of this? It's a lot of information. It always helps to take one of these classes and learn the broad overview before you get a counseling appointment, because then you kind of, you know, we don't have to go through this whole thing all over again. But I'm happy to, whenever someone calls me, I do a brief overview. So I don't expect you to remember all this. And like I said, any of these materials that you want me to send you, 
just email me so that I'll have your email address and I will email them to you. Any other questions? So uh, yeah, just feel free to contact me. I don't usually pick up the phone uh, because I get a lot of uh, you know people from Medicare but, <laughs> and everybody else bothering me. But if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you usually within uh, a day or two, depending on if it's a holiday or a weekend. Great. But I'll definitely get back to you. And then you know, for the for you guys who are Zoom capable, we can always do our counseling over Zoom. Uh, so you can watch what I do when I go into Medicare.gov. Now, Medicare.gov is supposed to be something that people can do for themselves. I would not try this at home without a professional. <laughs> Sometimes if it's very direct, you can figure it out. But other times there are a lot of uh, tricks and snags and things that you can do that you may not know about that we help you go through it. So, uh, so if we were going to try to get some more background information before we come to you and have you compare the our choices, like if we sort of get more a little bit more education and then narrow it down, then would it be good to come to you then before we sign on and and do the, and pull the yes, trigger? Yes, I, I can sign I can sign you up, you know, for everything but the Medigap, and I can tell you if you get more information and you want to go over it with me, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to, to do it for you, to go through it with you. The only thing I cannot do is get you the Medigap because that you have to get a broker. Okay. So, yeah. So even if we, if we were leaning toward the Medigap, then that would, would you be able to answer those questions or not really? I can answer your questions. I just don't, won't sell you the Medigap because we don't sell anything. And I would definitely get you your drug plan. Right. Okay, good. Well, this was very helpful because it was my day one. So I'm just sort of learning. I don't know anything. So I'm learning it. Okay. Well, if you think of any questions after the fact, just email them to me. Or if you forget my email, just uh, send it to Marie Angela and she'll send it to me. Good. Thank you so okay. much. I Thank appreciate you. your help. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.